The Tuscan city of Florence enjoys a level of fame that is almost unrivaled, and that's due to its wealth of cultural assets, its eye for beauty, and its flair for design. But underlying these assets, and linked to them, are sometimes underappreciated competencies in high technology. In this episode of FDI On Location, we'll explore how the old and new elements of the city's economy fit together and often complement each other. Join me as we go On Location. Florence is very well known around the world, but most people know only half of its story. The city's industrial and economic might is usually overshadowed by its sheer prettiness, just as its modern edge is overshadowed by the city's fascinating past. That is something local officials would like to correct. Firenze è un marchio internazionale conosciuto in tutto il mondo. È una capitale della cultura dello stile italiano, dell'italian lifestyle, ma allo stesso tempo anche un'area economicamente molto sviluppata. L'area metropolitana di Firenze può contare su 30 miliardi di euro di prodotto interno lordo all'anno. La parola di Firenze nel mondo è conosciuta da tutti, rappresenta la storia dell'umanità, ma rappresenta anche la modernità e soprattutto simbolo di bellezza. Non possiamo essere solo la città del passato, ma vogliamo essere la città del futuro. Four priority sectors are being promoted by the city for future inward investment. Culture, education, fashion and design, and high technology. Lovers of art, connoisseurs of culture, and students of history are spoiled for choice in a place like Florence. A rich sense of heritage permeates almost everywhere in the city, with markers of the past melded often beautifully, artistically, with the present. A stunning example of this fusion is the remarkable Cantina Antonori, a vineyard showroom and wine cellar complex set in the vine-covered hills of Chianti, halfway between Florence and Siena. It's owned by Marchesi Antonori, an Italian winemaker that can trace its history all the way back to 1385. The building was designed proudly by a local architectural firm. I was born in Florence, and so I consider myself part of Renaissance. And so what, but what is the meaning of Renaissance? Renaissance in certain ways is, a, is a modernity, and it's a, it's a future and the past together. And so in this building, we create a fusion between the tradition and innovation. There is a very thin line between tradition and innovation, and this is something that has always gone, uh, we say, in the DNA across all these centuries. You've got to keep in mind the traditions, they've got to be an example, they've got to be a support, but if you stop, you're lost. So. Whatever you know, you travel, you understand, you see, uh, you experiment, but always keeping in mind that you have a very long story behind and that this long story has taken us to this point, so it obviously worked. There is more to just an aesthetic value to Florence's iconic cultural and artistic offerings, something that local officials are realizing more and more. Florence ranks first in Italy for total number of companies working in what could be described as the cultural production system. And the city's becoming an international leader in advanced technology and high value added services for cultural heritage. Opportunities for foreign companies to participate in Florence's cultural economy range from R&D for advanced restoration equipment to the development and distribution of platforms and solutions for art, education and tourism as well as services for museums and fine art. In Palazzo Strozzi, a 15th century palace that hosts art exhibitions and cultural events, the tools of technology are being put to use to keep the tourism offer fresh. Well, technology is one of the many colors in the palette that we use. We have always been extremely technology friendly. Um, so what we do, as I say, is create 
objects, opportunities, publications, iPhone, electronic opportunities, touchscreens, tours, lectures, and this, and we create instruments that together allow visitors to come back and when they come back stay longer. So we are the city's laboratory for exploring cool stuff that Florence can do with its entire cultural wealth. Technology is deployed to not just show off cultural assets, but to preserve them as well. As just one example, LN, a multinational laser technology company based in Florence, puts its technologies towards the task of preserving works of art, even though its core applications are for medical and industrial uses. Because we are in Florence, uh, we are responsible to, to conserve what we have from the story, from the civilization. In Florence, there's a strong collective will to protect and preserve the city's vast wealth of cultural assets. Having these assets is seen as a responsibility, not just a birthright. Florence throughout the ages has been a center for learning, with scholars flocking here from around the world to live, study, and teach. The city's credentials as a preeminent European educational hub were solidified by its selection in 1972 as the location for the European University Institute. Scattered across the hillsides on the outskirts of Florence, the institute hosts researchers and faculty from some five dozen countries. The European University Institute focuses on doctoral and postdoctoral studies in social sciences. The location in a beautiful part of Florence aids its educational mission, says the president. If you take young people who are coming to do four or five years doctoral studies or coming for one or two years to do postdoctoral studies, uh, in a way we have to create an environment which allows la vita contemplativa. And it's hard for me to imagine uh, a better place that would give the conditions for that kind of vita contemplativa than a place like Florence. It's, I find it uh, just the right kind of mix of cosmopolitanism, cu cultural centrality and importance, and detachment, beauty, serenity that you want for this kind of uh, institution. Meanwhile, New York University has found a serene hilltop site of its own. NYU was bequeathed a picturesque villa and grounds 20 years ago upon the death of its last occupant. Left in the university's care, along with the property, was a treasure trove of historical items, which are now being showcased in a museum on site and carefully preserved by graduate students in the university's conservatory program. Hosting approximately 350 students a semester, mostly undergraduates, Florence is NYU's second largest study away site after London. It's an ideal place to learn both on campus and in Florence because Florence itself as a city becomes their classroom. Unlike studying art history in New York, looking at images of art on a screen, they're able to go downtown with their professors and stand before works of art and study them. Equally, it's a community rich in because of the presence of uh, the European University Institute and the University of Florence, rich in social science resources. Other U.S. universities present in Florence include the Ivy League universities of Stanford and Harvard. One of the newest arrivals to Florence's academic culture comes from the East, however. China's Tanji University inaugurated a campus in Florence in March 2014 that will serve as an academic support unit of the Shanghai Florence Sino-Italian Design Exchange Center, which opened at the same time. What the Chinese students and academics will discover, as their American colleagues did before them, is what Florence officials confidently say is a complete educational experience. It's one that offers cultural richness as well as the opportunity to collaborate with the existing network of educational establishments, such as the University of Florence, one of the largest institutions of research in higher education in Italy. Qui c'è una popolazione di giovani che viene a studiare e a perfezionarsi. Abbiamo più di 40 università americane, abbiamo università francesi. Abbiamo l'Istituto Universitario Europeo e un'università con più di 60.000 studenti. Dunque, tanti giovani che possono rappresentare una opportunità di investimento eh, con talenti e professionalità nuove. 
The city of Florence has cultivated links with China's commercial and creative capital, Shanghai. The latest product of this collaboration is the Shanghai Florence Sino-Italian Design Exchange Center. Inaugurated in a special ceremony in March 2014, the center will serve as an incubator for designers and creative companies. A sister center will open soon in Shanghai. We choose um, Florence because Florence is the cradle of Renaissance. And when you walk in the city, you can smell the uh, art and design everywhere. So we think this is really the best choice for us to invest and establish this project to bring the Chinese people and Italian people who are involved in the creative industry to exchange ideas and to make some uh, new spackle. While Florence's design skills cut across architecture, industrial and product design, and other segments, it is in fashion where Florentine design has found its greatest fans. Luxury menswear designer Stefano Ricci serves as president of the Florence Center for Italian Fashion, and he says elegant design comes naturally to the city. If you are grown in this town, you have to be blind, and if you don't absorb some kind of uh, balance of coloring, designing, atmosphere, culture, uh, that definitely has, there is a reason why so many brands are grown, are born and grown in the city. So I don't know if it's the art, I'm sure the big influence is culture, and the quality of life of Florence that re really makes a difference. The birth of the Florentine fashion industry took place with a game-changing series of fashion shows at the iconic Palazzo Pitti in the 1950s. The powerhouse that is Italian fashion as we know it today was born along with it. Five of the biggest names in Italian fashion have their roots in Florence. Salvatore Ferragamo, Emilio Pucci, Roberto Cavalli, Ermano Cervino, and Gucci. With a strong specialization in manufacturing leather goods, a large network of small and medium-sized businesses supply the major international fashion brands, combining fine artistic craftsmanship with industrial production. Uh, Florence uh, is uh, an extraordinary, a unique uh, uh, fashion district. We have uh, such a deep culture in manufacturing fashion that makes uh, this uh, city and this region one of the references worldwide. All the main Italian and international labels uh, have offices here, at least for buying raw materials and then producing uh, the, the very high end of the production and the products here in Florence. One of the famous five of Florence, the Ferragamo Fashion House, is known mostly for its functional yet elegant footwear. Its founder, Salvatore Ferragamo, came from the south of Italy, but after making his name as a young boy designing shoes for Hollywood in the 1920s, he returned to Italy and chose Florence as his and the company's base. While now selling to more than 100 countries, the heart and soul and much of the production of the Ferragamo fashion empire remains in and around Florence. Italian designer, Italian people are very creative. Uh, in, in, in many ways. And creativity is vital for, uh, um, for the world of fashion we produce uh, in Italy and we are proud of that. I think the made in Italy is uh, his own uh, importance, his own charisma. And, and also when you say Florence is, uh, is another value for uh, for uh, the company, for the consumer. And of course you have to do the right things at the right uh, quality, the right everything. Florence and Ferragamo, he says, are a perfect fit. Many of the ideas on which modern science is based were born in Florence. But while the scientists and inventors of the past still enjoy greater notoriety than those working here today, the quest for scientific discovery and technological advancement continues. Those outside of scientific circles don't tend to associate Florence with modern technology. International attention focuses on its role in early discoveries and its Renaissance-era scientific achievements. But there is a solid core of high-tech activity in and around Florence. 
Often uh, you think of Florence as something related just to cultural and architectural issues and historical issues, which certainly these are the basis of our, uh, of our city. But in reality we have a lot of science and technologies here, uh, historically. Uh, developed. Uh, uh, we go from uh, chemists to engineering. Uh, we have a, a strong relation to abroad and European activities in the high-tech sector. So in this moment we are quite well located uh, in the uh, research area in this, in this field. The region of Tuscany is highly geared towards advanced mechanics. Florence has found its strengths in biomedical life sciences, electronics, optoelectronics and optics, and the manufacture of scientific instruments. Also significant is the ICT sector, bolstered by Florence's tradition in telecommunications. Tuscany is a major exporter for Italy of technological products and is also an exporter of ideas and knowledge, developed in both private and public research systems. Industrial research and development commissioned by companies based abroad accounts for a large chunk of the region's high-tech sector revenue. Francesco Pavoni and Massimo Ignuccio, two acclaimed scientists working at the Lens Laboratory, which focuses on research in light waves, say that the high concentration of both national and international institutes and universities in Florence is an attraction for companies, as is the network of innovative local SMEs with which to partner. They can point to a long list of successful collaborations with major players in the private sector. Foreign companies engaged in advanced engineering and R&D activity in Florence include GE Oil & Gas, Japanese diesel engine maker Yanmar, and Talus, a French multinational that makes electrical systems for the aerospace, defense, transportation, and security industries. Talus has over the years transformed its site in Florence from one of mostly laborers to a high-level engineering center employing 200 people, most of them engineers. This region and is very attractive from a skills point of view and also from it's very dynamic in terms of PMI, small and medium enterprises, that can support and give us their contribution uh, to develop our solutions. So from Florence we export technology, from Florence we address all the market worldwide and these are key for the development of, also of Thales Group. Technology, of course, underpins all of the other sectors which form the basis of the economy of Florence. And the city's core sectors are woven together like a fine Renaissance tapestry. Any sector can be interesting, but what makes them particularly relevant, what makes particularly interesting for foreign investors is the fact they're interlinked. Take, for example, culture. Culture is our sort of bread and, bread and butter. However, fruition of culture, uh, restoration of culture, uh, needs technology. And obviously culture spills off into, into fashion, for instance. So what you have here, I think, it's a good mix, good blend of uh, excellences from education to high tech to design to fashion. While careful to preserve the treasures of the past, Florence continues to add modern new flourishes. The city is soon to unveil an eye-catching new theater and opera house, due to be the largest in Italy. It's a fitting new masterpiece for Italy's cultural capital and a visual blend of culture, design, engineering, and technology. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of Florence. Join us to see where we go next time on location.